this is a brief presentation on cabbage farming uh, so if you are a cabbage farmer this is a presentation for you you needed to tune in or you needed to watch this uh, presentation in cabbage farming I want to address uh, something which I've seen majority of cabbage farmers uh, struggling or uh, realize that cabbage farmers are not getting it right this uh, is when it comes to achieving uniformity or achieving if I can say uniform heads uh, in cabbage production you plant let's say uh, 20,000 seedlings and uh, it's the wish of every farmer to harvest let's say 18,000 or uh, 19,000 heads and sell at the best price but we know what happens for majority of cabbage farmers they end up harvesting uh, let's say 10,000 uh, in the first uh, round of cutting or harvesting and then the remaining 10,000 of course uh, not many will sell the, the rest of the, the remaining 10,000 but what uh, I have a problem with is uh, planting 10,000 uh, 20,000 we said 20,000 heads or seedlings and selling them uh, selling 50% in the first round of cutting and then selling the rest let's say in uh, maybe two or three rounds of course the different prices this is a big problem because uh, uh, this is where farmers uh, lose money because if you can harvest your cabbage uh, let's say 90 percent in the first round of cutting of course you'll sell at the best price because uh, for small scale farmers and mostly farmers who uh, rely on uh, middlemen or the brokers uh, we know how business goes on there so I want to give you a uh, top secrets they are just four four secrets uh, that will help you achieve uniformity or uh, that will help you uh, achieve uniform heads such that when the first buyer when your cabbage is ready the first buyer or the first broker knocks your door or visits your farm they can cut or they can harvest your produce not in uh, three or two rounds and at different prices but they'll just mention a price or they can just you can just sell i've seen farmers are selling or the negotiating for everything in the farm then they are paid lump sum and the farmer proceeds with other business and then the produce is left to the buyer of course to harvest of course over a period of time so what, what are these secrets number one we have a soil health soil health uh, not many farmers think about their soil and uh, this is uh, becoming a big issue especially with the horticultural farmers and the small scale farmers not many farmers think or know about soil conditioning farmers just uh, they just plant they harvest they plant again they harvest so uh, when we talk about soil health what exactly are we talking about I'm um, talking about uh, the soil pH that's one of the issue soil organic matter I'm talking about the soil borne diseases I'm talking about uh, even soil borne pests I'm talking about uh, nutrients availability I'm talking about uh, how I rated the soil is and uh, a lot to do with the rooting condition uh, we all know that cabbage is a feeder crop and 
definitely being an heavy feeder being a heavy feeder crop this crop will not do well where there is entrance or obstruction to feeding this crop needs to feed and i know you'll do everything you'll uh, apply fertilizers you will uh, feed the crop using foliar feeds but you need to do more than that you need to know the status of your soil the soil ph if the soil is acidic that's a big entrance or obstruction uh towards uh to when it comes to feeding it's a big 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 problem many farmers or many agronomists will tell you it's a heavy feeder crop it's a crop which will which feeds a lot so this crop definitely will not do well if there is hindrance or obstruction uh towards uh feeding or there is something which is uh stopping them if i can uh, use a simple language stopping them stopping the crop from feeding or from absorbing nutrients and what are some of the these issues which can uh, really hinder or stop a crop from absorbing nutrients one of them is uh if the soil ph conditions are not right if you are growing cabbage in acidic soils of course that crop will struggle and uh it is struggling because there are nutrients this crop cannot cannot uptake or cannot absorb if your soil is not uh, well drained if your soil uh does not have a good or uh, organic matter conditions are not right definitely again your crop may struggle and uh, in those two cases if the ph is not right and if your soil organic matter is also not right you need to amend or correct the ph mostly you need to bring the soil ph towards neutral if it is acidic we do this uh, we use lime or we do liming also the other the, the the most basic soil conditioning method is a uh, application of manure organic matter so if you are a cabbage farmer you need to start practicing this if you don't um, i know a majority of cabbage farmers they do they use manure i know there are those also who use these uh, technology liming technologies if you don't do them or you have, if you are hearing them for the first time, you need to adopt them. That is if you want to see those big heads. Or again, back to my topic, if you want to uh, uh, attain that uniformity. So you can apply lime just before prior uh, to transplanting. Also manure application needs to come prior to transplanting and uh, these two practices you can do them two weeks uh, two weeks to transplanting let's say if you are uh, planning to transplant your cabbages in two weeks time you can apply manure and also the lime and when I talk about uh, the lime we have uh, different liming technologies Mostly I'm talking about uh, the granulated uh, technology, which uh, acts faster, which uh, works on the soil faster. And when I talk about liming, I most likely, I know, we have different liming technologies. I'm talking about uh, the granulated uh, liming technology, granulated lime, which uh, acts faster or uh, uh, works on soil pH within a short period of time so most uh, probably this is the kind of lime i recommend uh, of course you'll be given uh, instructions or uh, directives of use or the application rates uh, where you source them for manure again manure also needs to be applied prior to transplanting uh, I'm always against the practice where farmers apply manure when planting, even when uh, planting other crops. Uh, you need to apply it prior 
and where possible incorporate with the soil uh that is the right practice then uh when transplanting you'll do your seedling you transplant your seedling and then of course you'll do your fertilizer application that is the first application of fertilizer i am coming to fertilizers because also uh, that is part of the nutrition and that is also one of the the top secrets but i feel like i'm done or have, i have I, I have addressed the issue of the soil health you need to really think about it about the soil borne diseases and soil borne pests you need to have your soil tested you need to have your soil tested uh periodically because as a cabbage farmer you need to budget for soil testing you need to do soil testing periodically soil testing will uh, help or will assist you and address uh, some of the issues which i can say it's very difficult to address them without a uh, soil test results this is the issue of uh, uh nutrient availability and deficiencies uh soil test results will uh, show or will uh, determine which are the, the, among the, the the essential nutrients which ones are available which ones are adequate and which ones are deficient and also some of the uh some of the, some of the soil testing companies will even show you at what levels so with that you are guided on uh, what to apply when it comes to fertilizer or what nutrients you need to really focus on also uh soil testing will also show you uh will also help you as uh, will also assist you address the issue of soil borne diseases and maybe soil borne pests the other issue is uh the nutrition part the nutrition part mostly uh has a lot to do with the the fertilizers and the feeding the actual feeding of the crop uh what exactly are you feeding your crop at what time that has always been my rule so for cabbage uh like any other crop you need to feed it with adequate uh, phosphorus at root development this crop needs to develop strong roots at establishment stage then at a um, vegetative stage you need to come with the nitrogen at a uh, vegetative stage actually early vegetative stage you need to come with a you need to top dress with a high nitrogen and uh, towards the onset or towards the head formation onset of head formation you need also to can you can also do a fertilizer high in nitrogen and also something high in calcium uh when it comes to foliar feeding foliar feeding foliar feeds again the same rule applies the right nutrients at the right time so with the foliar feeds if the crop is at the establishment stage you need to do a starter starter foliar feeds mostly they are rich in uh, they, they, they are high in phosphorus then uh, at the vegetative stage again you need to do something high in nitrogen then towards uh, head formation and across the head formation you can do relatively uh, high nitrogen calcium and uh, potassium i know someone will ask me if they apply some good quantity of manure are they still required to apply fertilizer that is at planting and also at uh, top dressing yes you still need to do the fertilizer you need still need to apply fertilizer it, uh, that is after transplanting and you still need to top dress your crop manure and fertilizer these are two different things their work or their roles are somehow different they are somehow uh, they are not actually interdependent actually one of them depends on the other i know in some uh, cases fertilizer will work well in areas where manure has been adequately applied you need to note that as a farmer you are not just uh, doing th things for the sake of doing them you are not just applying manure for the sake of application you need to know 
that if you are if you if you are farm as enough or uh, adequate uh, organic matter come your fertilizer application time come the top dressing your crop is likely to do to do better because uh among other things manure will ensure that your soil has a uh, what we call a uh, good uh, water holding capacity ideal soil moisture condition and also ideal soil temperature and that's exactly what your fertilizer needs for what you can call for efficiency in utilization and then uh, for fertilizer remember the fertilizer we feed it because we want to feed the crop with what we call essential elements essential nutrients so uh, in most cases I use a very simple language I always tell my farmers that it is the fertilizer it is fertilizer which will uh, provide or which will supply uh, these nutrients in the required or in uh, ideal or uh, adequate levels it is fertilizer so phosphorus for root development you cannot rely on manure to supply that nutrient at a vegetative stage you cannot rely on manure to supply that and quickly potassium or in most crops it's a, during the fruit and flowering stage again you cannot rely on manure you need the fertilizer you need the fertilizer just not this down if you have ever found yourself in dilemma whether to use more of manure and less fertilizer not it down that you need both of them because as i've explained they got different uh roles 